We thank you because you are good and you are kind. Thank you because you are holy. The quality of being unchanging. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name. While we're still standing, we're going to say our Psalm 23. Can I have more volume on the microphone, please? Praise the Lord. Please raise up your right hand and say after me, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil because thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies thou anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life as I am the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please, please, just one minute, say with me, say in the name of the Lord Jesus. When men say there's a casting down, I declare there's a lifting up. Say in the name of the Lord Jesus. When men say there's a casting down, I declare there's a lifting up. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. can have your seats. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into the word of God today. I'm going to preach short so that we can, we can um, it's already hot, so don't let's make it hotter. You know, all of you online, it's nice to see you online. All right. The good thing about the message today is that um, the message kind of tied together. So in the first, second, and third services, we're preaching about practical ways to move our life forward from God's word. In the fourth service, we're talking about overcoming helplessness. And it kind of sings together. <clears throat> I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 8 in verse 14. Matthew chapter 8 in verse Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. If you like, don't scream. Neri and your wife just be screaming at the back. These days, they just be screaming. Any small night, just say hallelujah, hallelujah. Just be screaming. Exactly. Exactly. Because today is your day. Amen. To have a baby at that age, that's a miracle. Praise the Lord. Is that the last one? Another one is coming, Eric. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that was that, but that was not Daisy. Where's Daisy, by the way? Where's Daisy? All right. Okay. You're here. Oh, praise. Why are you doing that? We can't scream. <laughs> if you know, you know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Matthew chapter 18 verse 14. The Bible says that when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. The Bible says, and he touched her and the fever left her. And he arose and ministered unto them. Verse 16. And when the eve, when the Bible says eve, the, you know, King James is old English, that actually means what evening, you know. When the evening was come, unto them many were possessed, many that were possessed with devils were come unto him. And he cast out the spirit with his words, and he healed all that were sick. Verse 17. That it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by Isaiah. When it says Isaiah there, Isaiah is the Greek word of the Hebrew word Isaiah. Oh, look at Esther. And your husband beside you. Oh, wow. You see, everybody from the olden days are here today. Praise the Lord. Esther, when are you going to tell them that you're one part of harvesters at some point? Today's the day, right? Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that <clears throat> when it says Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah is the Greek of Isaiah and the Hebrew. That's why when you read James chapter 5, the Bible says it will say Elias. Elias is the Greek of the Hebrew Elijah. You know, just like, you know, just in case you don't know, Joshua is the Hebrew of Jesus. You know, Joshua is the Hebrew of Jesus. So when you go to Israel today, even in Brazil, there are people that bear Jesus. 
people that bear Joshua, it's the just like Jesus. Amen. So the Bible says that <clears throat> that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Verse 18. And this is where it's challenging for me. They had this huge miracle crusade, and God was really honored. Sick were healed, blind were healed, everybody was healed, big things happened. It was a breakthrough in ministry. And when that happened, verse 18, and when Jesus saw the multitude coming, the just saw great multitude about him, he gave the command, and this was confusing. It says to depart onto the other side. Very challenging. I thought that this was the time for them to settle. Rather, the word came and said, this is the time for us to depart to the other side. And this is very instructive because we're all meant to learn and model our life for, 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 from Jesus. When the biggest thing was happening, when the biggest celebration was, Jesus said, this is not the time to settle. This is the time to move to the other side. So what is the other, other side? The other side is a metaphor for unconquered territories. The other side is a metaphor for higher levels and next phases. So Jesus was saying that, I know that we've covered this territory. I know that we've done this ministry work. But instead of us to settle down, it's time to take another leap and let's move over to the other side. The reason why I'm saying so is that the natural human nature loves to stay in comfort zones. That's what the natural human nature loves to do. So when something happens, oh, I, I want to stay here. It, it's my comfort zone. But you must remember this. Expansion and growth are out of your comfort zone. And I'm saying so because one of the things I sense that God is saying to us in this season is that we need to step out of our comfort zone and step into the other side. What does the other side look like? Maybe you're someone that you've been praying for 20 minutes. The other side can be like one hour prayer. Maybe you're someone that in business this year, last year you did a hundred million. The other side, and why that is wonderful. The other side might be you have to move to a hundred and fifty million. Maybe the other side for you is that you, you've been heartbroken, you're hurting, and you find it comfortable because of the hurt of your friends, because of the hurt of marriage, because of the hurt of relationships. You don't really get close to anybody again. You just know how to manage yourself. And God is saying that, I know that is your place of comfort, but it's time to jump to the other side because the other side is a place outside of your comfort zones. He said, let's go over to the other side. And as human beings, we don't like the other side. As human beings, the other side is very challenging for us. But God's call to everyone today is that let's go over to the other side. And I want to ask you a question. Are you settling or you're moving to the other side? It's a deep question. When you think of this year, are you going to settle this year? Or you're going to challenge yourself to move to the other side. I want to ask you spiritually: Have you settled? Are you going to move to the other side? I, I'll, I'll tell you something. I thank God for the people I was exposed to very early in my Christianity, very early in my Christianity, because some people ruined, <laughs> some people ruined me naturally. When I say ruined me, not in a bad way, like they broke me. One of them, I, I remember. <clears throat> This is how I began to pray for the sick. This is how I got the desire. This is how I got the desire. There's, a, there's an old timer. You know him, but a lot of you don't know about him. His name is W.F. Kumui. He's the founder of Deeper Life Bible Church. He's still alive. He's 80 something now. 1993, Deeper Life had this crusade called Power as of Hold. Joshua knows that crusade. Maybe Joshua only knows it because his father was a pastor in the church. Uh, what, what, did you ever heard of the crusade Power as of Hold? If you ever did wave your hands, you heard. Were you conscious? Because you were not conscious. You were, you were a baby, right? Okay, you're there. You don't know what it is. And you know, in those days, there was no screen, nothing like that. No internet in 993. I'm not sure there was internet at all. You know, there was computers, but there was no internet. And so this is what Pascal used to do. He would record in an audio cassette. 
and they will send the audio cassette to all the retreat locations. So, like, if this location, will send the audio cassette there. So, when he's preaching, you just see an empty pulpit. And if they want to help you, they will make someone stand there like this that is not preaching. The guy just standing. Just for mental image, that's what he's preaching. Just standing. Then, in the cassettes, watch this. Well, this is two, five thousand people listening to cassettes. Not seeing or listening to cassettes. Pastor Kumina says, I'm going to pray for the sick right now. And today, it's not, clo- I, it's not a close eye miracle. He said, all those that are sick should come to the hour. He said, if they are blind, if they are lame, if they are this, come to the hour. He said, everybody open your eyes. He said, as I begin to pray, the miracles begin to happen. <laughs> I said, well done. <laughs> ah, I said, well done. <laughs> of course, I was young, so I was paying attention. As I looked, first thing that happened, a guy that had hunchback, the hunchback disappeared. Hey! The whole retreat camp just scattered. I remember them saying something like, in that particular night, there were 130 something miracles, 100 creative miracles that particular night. And I'm saying so that when God wants to change your level, eh, it will make you taste something that does not belong to you to make you crave. When God wants to really help you, He will make you taste something that's not level so that you can crave. This is not just God, this also does it. How do people get an addiction? They will give you your first cocaine is free, but you come and buy. Nobody buys their first cocaine. I hope you know that. No, it's always like, like, oh no, it's nice. They will beg you to have it. They say, just sniff it. It's nothing. It's helpless. You're like, are you really sure? <laughs> and say, don't, don't worry. You say, you will sniff. Then after you get hooked, they will tell you that, no, it's not for free. You have to come and buy. Are you here? And, and that's how my life radically changed. It's radically, because I'm like, my God, you mean that so a human being can pray for another human being? And miracles like this can happen. But what I'm saying is this, what God used that experience to do for me was to take me out of my comfort zone and move me and, and move me to the other side. It was a desire to move to the other side. And the reason why is that I really think that a lot of you have settled where you are spiritually. I think a lot of you have settled where you are economically. And can I be honest with you? I think a lot of people are here and your marriage is not good or bad, but it has settled. And God is challenging you and say, take your marriage to the other side. And you're like, no, I don't want to do that because of him. And he said, I don't want to do that because of her. And God is saying, let's go to the other side. And some of you, it's not your marriage, it's your finances. The moment you hit the first 200 million naira, you're like, praise God. But the best of God is not in the past. The best of God is in the future. Oh, that's a good time to say something. That's a good time that you missed that shouting moment. That's a good time to say something. The best of God is not in the past. The best of God is where? In the future. I I, I know that you've done so. I I know that you're married right now. But the best of God is in the future. I know that your prayer life is okay. But the best of God is in your future. And it's time to say. We've mastered this level. This level is wonderful. But hey. The Lord is pulling us to the other side. The Lord is driving us to the other side. The Lord is calling us to the other side. Oh, my cap, oh, la cap, and I'm The Lord is calling us to the other side. And let me say something to you. One of the reasons why people don't even make, there's some people that don't even try again. And they've entered into what I call Lent helplessness. And the reason why they don't try again is because they've tried and tried and tried before and it has never worked. So like, no point to try again. The other day I was speaking with some, you know, some single ladies. I was trying to pray for them that were deemed to marry to delay. And one lady told me, is it just to give you perspective why I think I will not get married again? And this is when helplessness comes in. What's the perspective? He it said, it's 14 years ago I did it last. And since then, I've not been in any relationship. He said, and you're telling me that I can get married. And I said to her, if the circumstances around you change and you desire it, I believe that God can give you a miracle. The danger of, the danger of being in the problem for such a long time is this. You don't even see a way out again. Glory to God. And this word, And listen to me. If you're in this situation... 
and you are in a state where you cannot see a way out, where you are just helpless, where you think that because you have a problem, it will be there forever, there's something you have to do for yourself. Ask yourself, what is the belief that created this feeling? And for her, she said, I've been alone for such a long time, 14 years, and I've not dated, so I will not date again. So I said to her, you've not been alone for 14 years and I've not dated. There's a state of mind, a mindset you have that's kept you from dating for 14 years. If you change that mindset, your outcome will change. You say, wow, I never saw it that way. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And the reason I'm saying so is that, I mean, look, look at the story of the man in John chapter 4 and chapter 5. The Bible says, Jesus Christ said to him, he says, will you be made whole? And the man said, I have no man. A simple story, the simple belief was this. The reason why I can't work is because I have no one. And if that story is going to change, if, if the result is going to change, your story is going to change. All of us give ourselves a certain belief system that protects us. I'll give an example. When I was in school and um, I didn't have a good result, what I would say is that they gave me F. Have you noticed that? When I have a good result, all I say, I got an A. I never say they gave me an A. The reason why is that if I say they gave me an A, it's not befitting for my status. But if I say I got an F, it's also not befitting. So for me not to feel bad, I say to myself, what? They gave me F. That means that that's not what I deserve. That's what I was given. But I had no choice. The reason why is that the way the human nature is, you have to create a story that makes you okay for you to have what you have. So you hear people say that, oh, the reason I'm like this is because of this. Is that story. If you want things to change, you need to ask yourself, what story have I kept on telling myself and how do I change that story? So let me give another story. The story is that um, nobody wants to marry me because I'm not, I'm not that fine. It's a story. And because of that, you tell yourself something. You have to change the story. Oh, my marriage is not very happy because, because my husband is this or my wife is this. It's a story. You have to change the story. If you want to change the outcome, change the story. Did you get it? If you want to change the outcome, what do you do? You change the story. Someone says, I can never fall in love because I've been heartbroken. I agree with you. But that's the story. If you want to change the story, if you want to change the outcome, change the story. So guess what? The man looked at Jesus Christ and said, no man. I have no man to help me. And Jesus Christ instantly changed the story. He said, arise. He shifted his focus from looking for a man to looking to his own potential. He said, you've been always, he said, the problem is this, you've always been looking for a man to lift you. He said, arise, take up your bed and walk. What was, oh my God, I hope you see this. What just was saying was this, all your life, something always carried you. Either it was bed or it was man. But for you to have a breakthrough, you must carry what has carried you. And can I be honest with you? That's why God allows some people to disappoint you. The reason why is that if they don't disappoint you, not learn how to walk. And can I, can I say something to you? A lot of you that goody, goody people, you yeah, are the one destroying people. Because when God designed circumstances to allow them work, you will interrupt it and give them a loan. You will interrupt it and give them cash. And they will keep getting cash and not know how to work. Sometimes God allows people to go through certain phases so that they can develop their own potential and energy and work. But some of you are not discerning. So you think you are kind. You are not kind, sir. You are only paralyzing the initiative. I learned this in a very painful way. I learned this in a very I learned this in a very painful way. When I was younger, my mother, for the first time, my mother got this local chicken. The local chicken is the one that will create the egg and hatch the egg and turn into a chick. So they had created the chicken, she had gotten eggs, you know, and the eggs were there. And after about two or three days, all the eggs were hatched after, you know, but there was one one egg left. And I will just go to the cage and wonder, ah, now wow, all the chicks are following the mother hen, but this particular egg is there. Be me a goody-goody person. I'm a Christian, right? What should I do? I'll break the egg now. 
Is that not true? So I went one day and took something very light and just punctured the egg a little. And when I punctured the egg a little, the chick inside actually came out. But I noticed something that it couldn't work. So I asked my mom. Um, I told my mom what I had done. My mom said, you have killed the chick. I said, no, no, I, I saved the chick. Because sometimes not all help are help. Some helps are bondage in disguise. So I said, okay. So eventually, this is what I noticed. The chick could not walk. So when the mother hen was leading all the chicks to feed, he could not go and eventually died. So my mother explained to me. He said, that, the, what they call it, the egg. He said, when the chick is going to come out, in trying to break the egg, the break the shell, he develops muscles in the leg. He said, you aborted the process by breaking the shell for him. He said, because of that, you took away what you used to feed and eventually killed him. You know what I'm saying this to you? There are some people that need your help. But not helping them is what will help them. Because you will help them develop strength in their legs. They will understand that life is not about begging. Life is about sustenance. And they would get into a place that wisdom will come and something will break through. I'm not saying don't help people. But I'm only saying that you must be discerning. Glory to God. And many of you are here. The drastic change in your finance and life came when someone said no to you. Oh, you are here? You know what I'm talking about. The drastic change. When something happened, like, what? So this person may not be there tomorrow. You woke up. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I'm saying this because a lot of people are using crutches to life and people are their crutches. People are using it. And God's will is for you to arise and take up your bed and walk. Arise, take up your bed and walk. Glory to God. All right, let's keep going so we can finish and we can get into the, into the next thing. So one of the ways we move to the other side, so watch this now. One of the ways we move to the other side is through goal setting. Through goal setting. One of the ways we want to... One of the things... Uh, goal setting is very powerful. It will challenge you. I remember when I was young, I, I, I used to play table tennis. I, I don't play as much as, as much as I used right now, as I used to do. So I saw this guy playing table tennis. You know, and I said, let me just join. I know when you're playing table tennis, they say, you're playing the game, but it's not the real game. You know what I'm talking about? It's called tossing. Is that not so? They say, yeah, just, but what? We're tossing. So as I was tossing with this guy, the guy, you know, the guy, I kind of evaluated him. I said, I can beat this guy. Because, you know, when you're playing with someone that you can't beat, you just toss and go away because nobody wants to be embarrassed. Yes or no? And so I'm like, but as he was playing, ah. So I just said, ah, I just said, oh boy, game now, let's do game. He said, host, host, game, game. Yes. I just said, it was one seven. Ah, I just said, game, game, bam. He just changed. He just did like this. Why? Robo. Pa. I just hit the ball. Pass. <laughs> Next thing, four, robo, pass, pass. Ah, I said, hey, I didn't know you were like this. So, I, before you know it, zero five. The reason why I'm saying so is this when goal entered, the game changed. Your life will change when goals enter. I, I'm telling you, your potential will rise when goals enter. You'll be surprised. What you can do, what you can accomplish when there's a goal. That guy was behaving as if he could not play. But the moment we said, oh, oh, and he knew they were catching scores. That's why when you see people playing friendly match, don't judge their potential by friendly match. Oh. Because they will keep behaving as if they are all two until they enter the real match. Ah, I just saw the ball. Ah, he would just jump up, roll it, roll it. I'll be targeting the boy. Find out. Just I'm like what? But what changed him? The power of goals. The power of goals. The question is that 
What does God do? God uses goals to challenge us not to settle. What does God do? God uses what? Goals to challenge us not to what? Settle. So he would, he would, he would put something in your life that will make you thirst for something else. Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Somebody say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. And the reason I'm saying so is that there's a lot of reasons to be depressed. There's a lot of reasons to be discouraged. But when you have powerful goals, they will challenge you not to settle. What is your marital goal? Maybe your marriage has settled. We're not friends or we're not enemies. We're there. And God will give you a goal for your marriage to move forward. Maybe your spiritual life has settled. I, you know, I'm praying, but I'm not praying. And God will put a goal to move your spiritual life forward. God gives you a goal to challenge you not to settle. Look at Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Are you ready? Let's read together. I want to go. Let's read again. I want to go. Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest. Because it's what? Because it is what? God is saying that where you want to settle is not your rest. It is what? Polluted question are you settling on a polluted rest and all of a sudden you've settled but that place is polluted all of a sudden you are celebrating what is already polluted by god to god so one of the things that god does for goals is this one of the things that god does for goals that god uses goals to challenge you not to settle where's my ball is my ball here do you have it God uses goals to challenge me not to settle. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Put the ball there. Can you play? Can you play ball? No, not really. Who, who can play ball here? You, Samurai. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay, play. Just the two of you play. Listen, there's nothing actively happened. If you want to see the best of them, pull goal post there. Once you pull goal post, the man inside them will come out. The reason why is that there's something about goals that challenges you not to settle and for your full potential to come out. The second reason why you must have goals is this, and this is why God gives us goals. God uses goals. Goals are a statement of faith. Goals are what? A statement of faith. What are goals? Goals are raw declaration of what I can do by God's power. Goals are raw declarations of what I can do by God's power. What are goals important? Hebrews 11, 6. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, if I don't have goals, I don't have what I can use to please God. I don't have what I can use to please God. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Goals are raw declaration of what I can do by God's power. Naturally speaking, I'm trying to raise one million dollars for my IT setup. It's not possible, but God says I can do it by Christ, Christ's power. Naturally speaking, I should not be able to get the approval, but I say I will get it by God's power. That's a goal. It's a raw declaration of God's of what I can do by God's power. And when I have goals, I'm in faith. When I have goals, I'm in faith. What when you do this, what does that what does you do? When you have goals that are statements of God's of a statement of faith you give god something to work on see you must have goals that you cannot work on by yourself so that god can work on it by yourself let, let me give you let me give you give, give me a chair give me a chair give me a chair okay can i get one of the ladies in the choir to come maybe maybe the fair lady yeah just come yeah yeah thank you yeah thank you glory to god yeah goals give god something to work with somebody say goals give god something to work with say goals give god something to work with so goals give god something to work with. i want to watch this right now hey how are you my sister you're good right lift up this chair wow thank you you notice something because she could lift it there was no need for me to help her Every time you set a goal, you can lift. There's no need for God to help you. Some of you are wondering, how come God is not helping me? You've set a target that you can reach by yourself. You have, you have a dream that you can reach by yourself. 
every time you set a goal that you can achieve by yourself there is no need for god to help you but watch this can you come now can you lift this up just try okay move to the other side just put your hand on the side lift it up and guess what why as soon as she attempted to lift him up god stepped in and also lifted up question does your goal need god's help or is a goal you can achieve by your strength thank you glory to god does your goal need god's help the goal you set for your marriage for your family does it need god's help the goal you set for your ministry for your life does it need god's help the goal you set for your life does it need god's help or it's a goal that lord if you don't help me i'm stuck I want to show you someone this challenged me a lot joshua chapter 14 verse 12 joshua chapter 14 verse 12 this is very powerful joshua chapter 14 verse 12 are you ready can we read the first line together want to go joshua said now therefore are you hearing this he said joshua said joshua said hey 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 we don't do small stuff here he said now therefore give me the mountain why everybody is running away because of dollar you are running into it because we are not the one that run away from the mountain we are the one that run towards the mountain that's what it means but we are go faith go people we don't run from the mountain we run towards the mountain we don't run from the problem we run towards the problem we are the david generation while everyone is running away from goliath we are running towards goliath and telling goliath i will pull down your head today oh somebody say hallelujah somebody say hallelujah while everyone is saying that it's impossible to raise a fund to enter oil and gas to enter real estate you are saying give me the mountain we've had our tomb raisers but we are one mountain raiders oh this is powerful he said give me the mountain i always tell myself it will be impossible until someone does it that person can't be me Nehemiah 6, I think it's verse 11 or verse 12. Nehemiah faced a problem. And Nehemiah said this. He said, shall such a man as me flee? He said, so because there's problem in the economy, because, he said, because there's problem, he said, are we the one that will give up? Shall such a man as me flee? One of the things that God does is this. It challenges your potential to rise. Someone say hallelujah. You know I'm saying this to you? There are people under the sound of a voice that you stop setting goals. And I know the reason why. And people stop setting goals because of previous disappointments. They say, but I set goals two years ago, nothing happened. I set goals four years ago, nothing happened. And let me say this to you quickly. If you stop setting goals because of previous appointment, just remember this. The past does not equal the future. Oh, wow. Thank you for clapping. Thank you for clapping. Thank you for clapping. If you stop setting goals because of previous... So, I lost money in business. I was heartbroken. I lost my marriage. I have issues with work. And that's why I stopped setting goals. Just remember, the reason you stop setting goals is because you think... The future, what happened in the past, will repeat itself in the future. But remember that the past does not equal to the future. You must remind yourself, the past does not equal to the future. Isaiah said this way, he said, Behold, I do a new thing. He said, Remember not the past, consider not the things of old. He said, Behold, I do a new thing. You must remind yourself, the past is not equal to the future. The past is not equal to the future. The past is not equal to the future. Look at him and say the past is not equal to the future. Glory to God. Look at him and say the past is not equal to the future. Look at somebody and say the past is not equal to the future. 
in time past i know you lost money but the past is not equal to the future in time past i know you struggled in business but the past is not equal to the future in time past there was a medical challenge but the past is not equal to the future in time past you were heartbroken but the past is not equal to the future in time past your marriage almost broke up but the past is not equal to the future i can believe again i can trust again i can believe again i can trust again it's time for me to step out and move to the other side because the past is not equal to the future i can try again because the past is not equal to the future praise god i said praise god i said praise god i said praise god slap someone and high five i said the past is not equal to the future One lady had gone one lady had gone to there's this horrible story of this lady that had gone through three destructive relationships that really broke her heart and she just said that i've had it she locked up and said because of the pain i've gone through the relationship i would rather remain single than date somebody else he said he said the last person i dated took my money took my career took my body took everything from me he said if i die single there's nothing wrong in it and she literally shut up her mind shut up my motion all her social media pages became private she stopped if you ask her for a number she will never give you a number she will never say anything to you she will never reply anything to you and all of those kind of things and it was horrible but one day she began to hear the messages and she just said she, she heard the messages and the message kind of resonated with her that maybe i should open my heart for one more time and this guy came along and i will tell you the truth the guy really suffered because she literally punished the guy but one and a half years down the line they got married praise god and she came back and said this story you know what the story is he said thank you for challenging me to try again i did not know i was just one more stop to my testimony i thought that the past would always repeat itself i did not realize that the past is not equal to the future he said if i stop at three there will be no future but because you challenge me because you challenge me he said i believe god for a better thing and here am i married today and just one thing because you chose to believe that the past is not equal to the future she was living in a marriage the question is this are you so afraid that the past will repeat itself that you don't want to try again you must remember this the past is not equal to the future let's pray that's a good time to clap and stand on your feet everyone let's stand on your feet everyone let's pray let's pray let's stand on your feet what i want to do is to grab someone's hands and pray over that person and pray over that person that God will give them new dreams, that God will put new visions in their hearts, that God will put new goals in them. Let's go ahead and pray quickly. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. 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 Let's go ahead and pray yes lord yes lord they will try again they will try again they will try again oh lord thank you jesus and in jesus name we pray my prayer for you is this the first thing that everyone that you've lost vision you've lost goals that god will put fresh visions and goals in your heart and everyone that has goals and dreams that this year you will experience support and help in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you father I want you to open your eyes and look at me because I want to pray a final prayer a time came in the life of the dreamer Joseph the Bible says that and Joseph remembered his dream you know why because he was not living in the reality of the dream my prayer for you is that this year you will remember your dreams but the difference is this you will not be in the dream you'll be in the reality remembering your dreams 
Ramato ke sileba Pratiko shate kopana Libro te ke sus impana Ima rapata Let the grace of God make it happen for you In the name of Jesus That's the first of this year You will look back and you remember your trips. When we had wine press at TBS, number one, I thought it was, I think it was very crazy. No church does three days program in TBS. Everybody does one night because it's just challenging. Cost wise, organizing wise, it's just challenging. When we finished, someone that was in our ministry when we were in school came for wine press. And he looked at me. He said, You're really crazy. I said, what do you mean, my love? He said, you told me that this will happen 1998. He said, all I did was that I sat down there and I churned it back. I said, and Joseph had a dream. And I remember the dream. I'm saying so because this is what December 31st will look like to you. You'll be like, <laughs> you'll be like, You will slap your husband and be like, <laughs> wake me up, wake me up, wake me up. <laughs> wash this not true, wash, come on. <laughs> and, and tears are streaming down your eyes. And you can't contain yourself. I'm like, tap me, tap me, tap me. And you say, I remember when this was a dream. But the difference is that you are now living in the reality of your dream. And that's my prayer for you. That this year you will live in the reality of your dreams. It's my, it's my deep prayer for everyone here. Despite the odds, despite economy, despite dollar, despite what's going on, you will live in the reality of your dreams. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout, I receive it. Amen. God bless you can have your sins.